All right, today's question comes from Bill in Rhode Island. Bill says, I'm 37, and I really found myself in a lucky spot. Just three years ago, I was making around 50 grand, and now I'm clearing over $120,000 as a cloud engineer. Rain dancer. He's a rain dancer. Correct. Correct. Just, just making my, sure you know what that is. My wife and I combined make about $180,000, and to be honest, for people like us, man, I hate that language, but I know it. I feel it in my guts. It's a bit overwhelming. We have student debt, which we are attacking hard, and we have recently been writing checks towards that debt that used to be what we made for an entire month. My question is, how do you psychologically process this amount of money growth and don't feel shaken up when paying off large sums of debt? I also know more is coming as my wife and I are committed to not allow, uh, I'm not even at a management level, which on average comes with a 30% increase. My wife and I are committed not to allow our growth and in income to become the life sucker I've heard about on this show. I get this at a in my bones because I grew up with not a lot and money was a big struggle at my home. And Dave, you and I, I've, I've come to you for wisdom on this um, because money was for those people and vacations were what those guys did and those shoes were what they and those cars were for them. And it was it, it, it's it's bizarre finding yourself in those shoes and then saying, what do I, what do, I do? Because I'm not them. I'm one of those. Right. It's, yeah, it, I think there's it's two. Been tough th- on me. There's two things you got to process there. Um, one is, uh, am I worthy of this? And he's got that language. I'm, I, know, I just I got know. lucky. Yeah, and... uh, is all that in there? And, yeah. and so, yeah, you got to walk away from that part of it. And then the second part is kind of, I think, more, maybe even more, what he's asking about, but he doesn't realize it. it is, um, it, you do have to psychologically adjust to more money. I mean, it's 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 a thing. I mean, I like we spend more on coffee at Ramsey per month for the team here than I used to make in a year. I have to psychologically adjust to that. <laughs> I mean, when I sit down and I see that on the P&L, P&L, it still simultaneously pisses me off, scares me, makes me feel proud, right? Exactly. All, this, all, all at the same it. time. Yes. All at the same time. Like, what? And, oh, God! And, well, I guess I can do that. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like simultaneously, right? And so, it's God. And, and it, but it's, it's zeros. It's emotional. And uh, the only way I have found for that part of it, not the identity part, but the part of just the shock of the zeros, of I spend more on blank than I ever made in a year, which is kind of what he said. Right. We just sent, sent off more to Sally Mae than I ever made in a year before or a month before or whatever, it, is you just – the only way you – you get used to it as you do it more. <laughs> you just you live in it more. I mean, so somebody that has lived with a three hundred thousand dollar income for ten years is more psychologically adjusted to that than someone who's lived with it for three months. That's right. And so that that's normal. So that will solve itself. Uh, and you got to be careful because right. you can get to taking it for granted, kind of a thing. Um, and not counting your blessings and all of those sorts of things, not feeling grateful for all you of des- it. Like now you deserve. Now this. I deserve three hundred. What do you mean, just three hundred? You know, right. I like, never even solved three hundred. You said three hundred pennies. You know, yeah. but um, and but no, 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 I am. But then the second part of it is, you, you know, are you worthy? And, and you know, you have to. That's a spiritual walk and a psychological walk to say, okay, what makes me worth? something in the marketplace is it my is it god loves me more well no he loves poor people as much as he loves rich people and he loves rich people as much as he loves poor people for those of you that are socialists and so um he loves everybody that and it doesn't lot you know you don't love one kid that's talented more than the kid that's not talented sure um you know you they're just all my kids I, i've got you know everybody's got a spectrum of them you know and so that that's part of it. So God, it's not a God's love thing. He's not blessing you beyond someone else. Um, so what is it that's causing the money? It's you're doing something that's worth more to society. Mm-hmm. It's an economic transaction. Mm-hmm. And once you kind of separate that out from your spiritual worth or your psychological worth or and, and then some idiot from the old neighborhood will say something like, you've gotten too big for your britches. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like you noticed, yeah, I've been putting on a little weight, liking donuts, but yeah, I had to change britches a time or two, but that wasn't what they were meant. That's right. <laughs> they that's were right. talking about my waistline or talking about, uh, oh, you're, you're yeah. fancy now. Yeah. yeah. You're fancy now. And you know, I've had that happen actually on this show. You know, you go back and listen to this show. If you could get a tape of it 
from 20 years ago. It's been I've been on there 30 years. It sounds ridiculously exactly the same. <laughs> Like the same level of boldness, the same level of carrying on, the same level of whatever, same level of kindness and compassion when someone's hurting, the same level of in your face when you're stupid. And and yet it never fails that someone comes along and they go, you know, I used to listen to you, but now, now that you've gotten big, you know, now you changed. Well, I didn't change, honey. <laughs> go back and listen to other shows. You're the one changed. <laughs> so I've had, it's interesting. I, I've had to get rid of for people like us language, like he writes yeah. about in this question, yeah. because I had pigeonholed myself as... Identity. It's an identity, yeah. And you gave me some wisdom early on that has really been important for me. In fact, just this morning, I was talking to Hank about it, my 12-year-old. Um, you said, when you're making this transition, remember ratios. And mm -hmm. that's been very important for me. In that, like you, like, man, if we could scratch together, <laughs> Sheila and I, if we could scratch together... Enough to get some spaghetti every day for the week. Mm -hmm. Man, that was great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then we went out with a couple from work the other day and the bill came. I thought that I used to be a lot of groceries. Right. And but the percentage of right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the percentage of what my take home salary what used to be versus and so and my debt income, all that the ratio has been really important. Yeah, it, it just it tells you if you're out of line. That's exactly right. OK, because you're not people like you used to be. You're people like you are now. That's right. And so don't I, you know, your identity can be, I came from there. It's like Condoleezza Rice's uh, uh, line. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. All that matters is where you're going to. That's right. And so, you know, if you don't, where you grew up is, is part of your story, but it is not necessarily who you are today. That's right. Your level of education is part of your story, but it's not necessarily who you are today. Um, these are all elements of who you are today, but um, I'm not the same person that little David Ramsey at thirty seven thirteen Faulkner Drive. And thank goodness, right? Yeah, because he wasn't real bright. <laughs> <laughs> John Deloney wasn't either. But Can I also, you imagine the dumb butt stuff I've done on a bicycle? I, I appreciate <laughs> you and everyone we work with. Um, I, I think the ethos of this place, it's right over there on the wall. Don't despise humble beginnings. Um, always making sure we're tipping folks and taking care of people. Never forgetting those moments that when, when you couldn't rub two pennies together, right? I think I think there's an ethos here. Yeah, and and in that sense, you remember, you know, what is the, the hillbilly my, my hillbilly upbringing? Don't forget your raisin. <laughs> I'll always love raisins, but I don't know what they're talking about. I love yeah. raisins. Don't forget your raisin. How you were brought up. Don't yeah. forget how you were brought up. Right. And so there's some good things you want to do with that. I'm loyal to vendors that have been with us forever because part of my raisin was you dance with the girl that brought you. Yep. You know. So there's some good things in there. Um, that you stick with uh, that are principles, but the identity that the only way I'm wholly me is to be poor, right? not true. That's, right. That, that's, an, that's a false identity. So, yeah, there's two things you have to do. Is one, you have to adjust the identity, and the second thing is you just get used to, Practice. with ratios, the, uh, the use of money of that amount, and it's going to mean you're driving cars, and you're going to look up and you go, I got a friend made $15 million last year. And he drove up the other day in a four hundred thousand dollar car, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> ah! "Who needs a? Oh, wait a minute! It's it's less than a guy making a hundred and fifty thousand spending on a four thousand dollar car. Uh, exactly the same ratio. It's no big deal. Yeah. I mean, he can drive a stupid thing off a cliff, and as long as nobody's hurt, it ain't gonna hurt him. He'll be all right. It's like you know, but it's in my where you know where you come from. It's like shocks your system."